Welcome to It's All Fine and Dangy, where we talk about community, health, culture, and all of the big and little things that make life good. Here are your hosts, Dan and Angie. Hey guys, welcome to episode 101 of the It's All Fine and Dandy Feels show. weird to say that, doesn't it? It does. I should have said the 101st. That sounds a little better. So, nah, I'm yeah, good with now I'm going to go back and, and change that. Podcasting 101. That's right. Oh, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a good way to look at it. Well, you guys know that we love to support small businesses. And um, today we get to learn a little more about a company called Elemental Form. Very cool company name. Yeah, by the way. a cool local business that creates unique custom pieces. So we're super excited to talk to Rob Gore, who's one of my old high school buddies, Yep. and Patch Path. So thank you guys for joining us this Sunday morning, or may hey, I say joining doing? us again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good morning. So quick quick tip for the <laughs> listeners. This has never happened before, but we, we talked to these guys already once, and we had a technical issue, and now we get to talk to you guys again. So I guess that's kind of a bonus. Thank you for joining us again, because most yes. people will be like, mm, no, not, not doing, doing that, that again. again, not going through that again. So we, <laughs> nah, we, we appreciate fine. it. We appreciate yes, it. Yes, we do. We understand. So, <laughs> so I, as I mentioned to Angie at the beginning, I, I think your company name is very cool. We may have joked about this, and I'm not going to say that through the whole interview. I think we said this last time, but Elemental Form sounds like a band name to me. I think I do <laughs> that whenever there's a cool name. <laughs> um, but before we talk about what you guys make and stuff, how did you decide on that name? How'd you come up with it? Patch, I think this is uh, this is for you, bud. Well, um, so <laughs> it's gonna hard for me, gonna be hard for me to say or not reference the last time we did this. Too. Oh, you can, you totally no, can. Fine. Totally um, can. Yeah, so we did talk about it before. Um, the elemental form thing came from um, just kind of like a a multifaceted background of working mediums. Um, We didn't want to necessarily be known as a CNC shop or a metalworking shop or anything like that. Um, I've worked with all the medias in the past professionally or just for fun. Uh, So like the woodworking combined with doing tile and stone and doing metalworking and everything like that, it made more sense to just pick a name that was a little more general, a little more broad. So elemental form kind of forms all of the elements into one cohesive thing and like you know, it. it's kind of how, how, it, how it came up with it that kind of rolls off the tongue pretty good and written yeah. out it looks great um my uh it's, my it's graphic artsy artist and side yeah. of me yeah it's artsy yeah, and um, scientific sounding at the same time which is cool hmm. <laughs> And you know what's yeah. funny is, um, so Dan said, it sounds like a cool band name. And I just happened to notice in both of your backgrounds, <laughs> we have guitars. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that is hilarious. But I didn't do obviously that on purpose. You're, well, I know Rob's <laughs> a musician because he's played ever since I know him and has had bands. Um, but what about you, Patch? Are you um, musically inclined yeah. as well? Yeah. Uh, my parents had us on stage when we were still in diapers. So. It's oh. uh, been a, a lifelong thing for me in music and just being nice. in and around it. My, I have three brothers. They play. I was actually in a band with Rob for about 10 years. So, Oh, that's um, right. So we did yeah. chat about that last time. That's right. Yep. Yeah, 22 Black was like a 2008 yeah. through 2016, 17 thing. And yeah, we spent uh, spent a lot of time uh, making music. That's for sure. Very nice. What do you guys play? Besides, I mean, I see you both yeah. have guitars. One of you sing too. Do you play anything else or? Um, we both sing, we both play guitar patch. I think focus on bass. I'm more focused on six string. Um, very nice. I can play a little bit of keys, you know, uh, play lead and rhythm guitar, play drums a little bit. I don't know. You know, we just grew up around it. Very so, nice. Yeah. I played drums for years, but, uh, yeah, that's awesome. It would have been funny if patch said, no, I don't play this. So this is just for display. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is just for the show. I just wanted this room to look really good. So how did you guys meet? Because you've been in a, you know, you were in a band for 10 years together, but before, how did you first get introduced to each other? <laughs> I I actually don't remember. Rob, you were, um, you were. I mean, go ahead. I don't remember the first time we met. It's been a long time. I, I, I would say. I, okay, so I played we, we definitely with, were involved in the same little league oh, oh. Little league. okay that goes yeah. way back wow then. like yeah and his dad and older brothers you know were a, his older brothers were a little younger than me so i played against them 
Um, so I guess that's where I first got to know the paths and then, but Patch is, you know, about 10 years younger than me. So I wasn't playing ball against him. He was mm -hmm. probably running around, you know, being a little, uh, crazy toddler or something <laughs> while I was playing baseball. But, um, <laughs> no, and then years later, um, just through school and, you know, just growing up in the area and knowing the brothers and then, you know, I kind of knew them. And then, um, in 08, when we start, when I joined 22 black, you know, that's, I think when we really started to get to know each other and, and, uh, you know, forge the relationship that's lasted till now and into the future. So cool. That's awesome. So, yeah. So last time we talked, I asked about the little 18 on your, um, on your logo. And you yep. said that was the, I thought it was like, could it be some special story, but it's just, you, you started it in eight, 2018, right? Elemental yeah. form in 2018. So yep. where did the idea come from? Like, how did, you know, when did your ideas merge together to say, Hey, let's do this. Let's, let's take this to the next level. Tell us a little bit uh, of the backstory. So I, I'd, I'd say, um, I guess I'll go and then patch can add in from his side. But, uh, for me, um, is kind of a mixture of, of, uh, inner desire to do something on my own that was, you know, kind of like a, a maker type, you know, uh, business or whatever. Um, and I, uh, my dad passed away and I acquired his machine shop. Um, and, you know, Patch and I were, Patch started designing some furniture and just doing some cool renderings and stuff like that. And, and we just started, you know, kind of talking about like, Hey, you know, this, this seems, you know, like something that could be real. Um, another catalyst for me was I took a trip to New York city a few years back. It's been maybe three years now, 2017, I guess. And, um, just saw some of the furniture stores there and mm -hmm. what they were doing and how successful they were. Yeah. And, um, and just, you know, all of that together, you know, for me, it was like, like, you know, 10 different things kind of mixing together that pushing me in that direction. And, and I'm the type of person that, that tries to not get, you know, I think we talked about it before, the sunk cost fallacy. I, I don't want to just do what I'm doing because I'm doing that. I want to look forward and make decisions that that are going to make me happiest, most prosperous, whatever, yep. looking forward. So that's what all led to this from my side. Um, maybe Patch can add in, you know, from his side. Um, cool. But for me, that was, that for was me I'm just kind of a busybody. If, if I don't have something <laughs> to do, I'm very bored and lonely. So. Yep. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm, uh, that is me for sure. Yeah, I have to keep. I, uh, he has to keep busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, there definitely is an element to that, but um, I I'm always looking for a creative outlet for anything. I have terrible anxiety and ADHD, so working with my hands and creative mm -hmm. problem solving and that sort of thing really kind of calms me down and, and helps me keeps me focused. And everything like that, I just. I think about three or 400 things at a time. So if I'm not focused on a task, if I'm like sitting idly, it's, it gets honestly like a little more crippling than you would imagine. But, mm. um, and, um, it's just one of those things that I really love to do is, is make stuff, make things with my hands. Um, I've always, or Rob's got a big, huge brain in his head and I like to take advantage of his ability to computate <laughs> math real quick. And, uh, make sure that I don't do anything stupid while I'm running CNC machines or, you know, trying to come up with a design for a piece of furniture. And Rob's like, no, it's going to break right there because you don't have the structural strength that it needs to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, but wow. it looks cooler. So <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was the architect versus the engineer, look how it right? Looks like it's break <laughs> it though. Exactly. <laughs> so you guys are both obviously very smart, very talented, very creative. Um, and it's funny because I, as I was getting ready to ask you to kind of describe what it is you guys provide, because we're kind of doing that slow crawl into what you actually do with elemental yep. form. Mm -hmm. But I, that concept of something looking super cool, like customized pieces of furniture. It, I was thinking the same thing earlier, like sometimes those customized pieces, how do you know there's got to be some sort of uh, guidelines you have to follow because it could be insanely cool. And then you sit on it and the legs break off or whatever. So maybe yep. start with telling us what you guys do. Like what, what are the things that you're creating? All right. So I've, I've got a, I've been thinking about this and this should be more coherent than uh, other times I've explained it. Um, <laughs> Elemental, form, <laughs> Elemental form is a specialty woodworking shop. Uh, we yes. focus on signs and art made from wood slabs. So like exotic wood slabs, walnut, Brazilian tiger mm. wood, things like that. Um, that said, 
we we provide design services, rendering services. Uh, we have a CNC router, which is a big computer controlled, um, like a table, you know, that can do uh, machining uh, for our signs and, and really for anything else that, um, you know, that'll fit within the build envelope, which is like four by eight feet by four inches. Um, we also do fabrication and machining. I have a full machine shop, mill, lathe, TIG welder, sheet metal tools. So it's, um, you know, really we're focusing on the, on the signs and, and that kind of stuff with the slabs, but, but it's, uh, it's really, um, you know, there's kind of no limits on it is the way that oh, I cool. see it. Um, what you could make. Yeah. Right. So, so that's, that's what we do. Um, and what we make, uh, and we are constantly increasing our, uh, our capabilities in the shop. Patch and I are always working to increase our knowledge and capabilities in the areas that we're focusing. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. So okay. impressive. So for Very those of cool. you guys that are watching this on YouTube, rather than listening to the audio podcast, I'll throw some images up on screen of some of the uh, work mm. that you guys have done. Super high end stuff. Uh, yeah. very impressive looking. You guys have also done something I've never seen anyone do before with these types of signs with the sort of the lighting element that's like built in. I'm thinking of the Scooby-Doo one yep. uh, in particular, but can you tell us a little bit about what that process is? Because it looks almost like the inside of the wood is glowing on its own. It's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, Pat, you want to do that one? Yeah, sure. Um, so when it comes to those panels and the things that we do, there's there's a aspect of the lighting that makes it look really unique in the fact that we use these globe globe back panels instead of just led strips like traditional people would do and how it diffuses the light and then it'll hit the epoxy and it'll diffuse even more um so that it looks like it's just like a solid block of glowing epoxy as opposed to where you look through it and you could see the individual led diodes and it kind of you know, you can tell exactly yeah. what it is when you look into it, where you look right. at our sign and you see them and you're like, oh my God, why is that glowing like that? Yeah, um, the, it's, no, it's like a glow. We, uh, yeah. We, we, mm -hmm. Yeah. The company that we use is based out of Miami, I believe, somewhere in South Florida. And mm -hmm. um, they're very yeah. proud of those panels. They're extremely expensive, but <laughs> it, it, it makes the most unique um make it's the most unique looking thing ever and uh, because of their technology obviously it makes our mm -hmm. our work look a little better yeah and we we um just to add to that you know we we had the idea of doing these these backlit um, wood panels so you know just real quickly what's going on there and uh you know for the people watching hopefully at this point you've you've seen a picture or a video of mm -hmm. it yeah you know, we take will. a wood we take a wood slab and we machine out a logo and then we fill that with a translucent resin. And then we machine out a pocket in the back of that wood where we put in these glowback panels that, that Patch is talking about. And so the effect from the front is you've got this beautifully finished wood panel with a really cool logo and some sort of you know translucent looking resin, which already looks cool by itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then and then you've got that panel behind it. And when um, you know that panel can do full RGB. Uh, or white light and it can cycle through the light so you can really get a bunch of cool effects and and the overall you know kind of blend of the you know sort of the neon light effect from the mm -hmm. lighting and then the the classiness of the wood you know we really just thought that that together made a, a you know something that pops and um you know is really uh, just eye-catching and stands out it yeah. is and it, you know um everyone has the leds i have them all over the place in our house mm -hmm. behind furniture and stuff and they're nice but just like patch said you can see where it gets a little brighter and a little softer down a strip of leds and that's one thing i noticed with your work it's just it's like an alien light almost it's it's, yeah. it's consistent yeah, those... <laughs> across the board it's really cool yeah it's very high-end looking yeah. too um i have a question so is it like battery operated in the back no, it, plug, or... it plugs in oh it yeah. plugs in okay yeah so, so you, you have could... to you could either, you know, what we would recommend is, you know, something like one of these signs would, you know, we would envision that as a permanent or semi-permanent mm -hmm. installment. So um, you may be, you know, run the wire through the drywall or something like that. But, you know, it's just a regular power cord that hangs down. It's just, you know, it's up to the person installing it if they decide mm -hmm. they want the cord to be visible or not. But yeah, but yeah it's, it's a regular, you know, just plugs into the wall, has a little remote control, um, a little instruction kit on how to program the lights or, you know, get get exactly what you're wanting from the lighting. So it's pretty. That neat. is really cool. It yeah, is. Yeah, cool. I would definitely put an outlet or something behind it. And, and I love that you're able to mix you know, the, um, uh, what am I trying to say? The mathematics with the creative side, 
Yeah. Well, it's the, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's engineering, right? So engineering yeah. is, is it's, it's <laughs> taking your idea and, and being able to make it into a real thing that actually mm-hmm. functions. Yeah. And, you know, your idea is not really bound by, by reality, so to speak, or physics or whatever you <laughs> yeah. want to say, but to actually make it real, you do have to play within that, that space. Um, so that's the trick is, is being able to, and, and, you know, we've been able to, uh, have a lot of what I'll call first try successes instead of having to iterate a lot, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you know, and, and, um, that's because, uh, a combination of our experience and, uh, you know, just the, the things that we focus on, um, ahead of time. Yeah. So. Cause especially with the materials that you're using, that could get very costly when you do make really bad it, mistakes. It, you know? work, yeah. <laughs> it does. And when you're blending together epoxies and woods and other things, you've got all kinds of dissimilar materials and you know, there mm. really kind of is a lot more behind it than, than yeah. just, you know, simply slapping it together. And, you know, there, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. I would also yeah. think like with that epoxy and stuff, well, a couple of things, I would think it's a one shot deal. It's not like you can try to do it and then it didn't work. So you take it all back apart again and try it a different way. I mean, it's, no, you could, you could maybe machine it out, but at that point I'd just be uh, using that thing as a oil catcher and <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but you know, you said something important too, you know, I work at my day job at an engineering company and there's a difference between engineering a building or a car or things that are maybe a car is not a good example, but things that have been done a million times and maybe you have to do it slightly different because of the space. There's a difference between that kind of engineering and, and the engineering that has such a creative element to it that you're like off the beaten path. There's no yep. guide you can go look at on how this was done before. It's first principles yeah. engineering yes. versus, yeah. versus iterative. You know, it, I worked at a big company and our, our approach as this massive company was to take little incremental steps because that way we were pretty confident we weren't going to make a mistake. Yep. Um, whereas in this situation, you're just, it's have an idea and then take what you know about materials and the way things work and everything and, and put together a plan and, 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 and go for it. And yeah. so far we've been successful at that. So. I love that. The closest oh, I, I think I could understand to that is uh, the firm I work for does a lot of entertainment work. We do all the major theme parks around here. And there was one section we were working on years ago for one of the islands, you know, which park I'm talking about probably. And there wasn't a straight line in the park that was by design. Right. And we had to put all the plumbing and the electrical. The plumbing was the hardest, but you're running through a, you know, a, a fake tree and then going under, you know, you got to do all this weird stuff. And it reminds me kind of of what you guys are doing because it's, mm. you can't call a buddy and say, Hey, you did this before. How do you do it? It's, it's all you, You're the, done it. you had the, you had the term <laughs> so, for it, but yeah, it, it is, it is that I, I call it first principles, just yeah. meaning that you're basing your, your thinking, you're not going, I'm doing this because this worked before you're saying, yeah. well, I understand how this works. And so I think that's going to work like this yeah. and, and, and you're basing it on, on that kind of thing. But, um, the, 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 sort of the the nice yin yang of that though is in the end we're making art pieces mostly mm-hmm. that that are meant to look at and 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 you know evoke a certain uh, emotion or you know uh, response in the person looking at it so in that respect we don't have a lot of boundary conditions and we're, yeah. we're free you know so we're it's it's this neat mixture where you're super free on the one side but then you know, sort of bound on the other side by what it takes to make it actually happen. So, right. but playing around in those two spaces is super, super yeah. fun. So, oh, I bet. Cool. And I see what you're saying too. No one's life is on the line if the thing yeah. didn't work. Yeah, yeah yep. I got you. So, yep. I want to go back to um, uh, like the the furniture making because yep. Path. I know that was that's like you've been really into that. But I want to mix that with what Rob said when he went to New York. He saw these you know very successful um, furniture companies. And or galleries, I would say, because it's yep. not mass produced thing. I th- I think like us, we're sick of like the mass produced stuff. And you do when you are a little more artsy or, you know, just want your house to look nice. You want a custom piece. You want something that's like you you kind of have the thought of it. So how would that how would that work if I brought you an idea of a piece? You guys are kind of going to work the same as if you're creating it on your own where you're going to tell us, hey, this isn't going to work, but here's what we can do with it. Is that kind of how, if I wanted a custom piece of furniture, um, is that how the process would work as far as making that for me as a customer? I'd say, yeah, I'd say Patch could probably feel this one better because he's going to be the one that's doing sort of the first first um, shots there. 
So for me, when a, when a customer comes to us and asks us uh, for something, it's uh, uh, people at this point, they, they're coming to me because of my particular design styles and choices and everything like that. So they'll give me a loose idea of what they want. And then I will design something that's within my capabilities of manufacturing myself. So whether it be, you know, um, recycled wood or using metals or stone or something like that, um, a combination of the media that I can do. Now, if somebody comes to me and they're like, hey, I want this formed plastic thing here, here and here, it's just not something that I'm even going to attempt mm. to do because I'm not going to be able to do it justice. Um, yeah. So what I do is I work in where I'm comfortable in doing um, the design space, my manufacturing capabilities as far as what I can do. And I, you know, uh, obviously then I'll get artistic with it. And then Rob will tell me that I measured everything incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> and j- j- <laughs> So, and um, you start from square one. <laughs> yeah, to add to that a little bit, um, just from a more, I guess, that's like kind of like the philosophical side that practically, mm-hmm. you know, if you if someone came to us and just said, hey, I want a bed, you know, this cool, I have this mat- uh, king size box spring and mattress and I want a cool custom bed and I want it to have some metal and some wood and, you know, I've seen you guys stuff and, you know, these are the things I want. The first thing we would do is, is sit down and, and do a design in, in CAD space and and do a rendering, you know, and and show them, hey, you know, we can make this here. Is this what you're thinking? And, you know, kind of work back and forth to come up with something. We, we haven't really had that sort of specific thing happen yet. Mm. Um, you know, we're still on the, it's it happened with signs. Yeah, <laughs> it has happened with furniture. It's happened with yeah. signs. And that's kind of what we did. You know, we, we make a rendering. We say, hey, you know, here's what we're thinking. And then they say, oh, that's super cool, man. It would be cool if, you know, like in the Scooby sign, I think in the beginning, it was just going to be like a mi- the mystery machine or something. And then mm-hmm. it kind of evolved to the gang, you know, back, and that was a back and forth thing where, you know, we were doing renderings and sending them to the uh, the client and then they would, you know, we'd kick around and, um, you know, so that's kind of how that works. Yeah. Um, and, you know, in the end, we, we don't want to make something for somebody that they don't want, uh, but we also don't want them lead someone to think that the thing that they want is is a doable thing so it you know yeah. there's a there's a lot of uh, you know subtleness to but that, that that's an that's a um honesty and integrity of your company so yep. i think that's yeah. great and yeah. i think it, the, to me it's just like any artist because that's what you guys i know there's the engineering side but any artist that you're going to commission to make any kind of art piece you don't say i want this exact thing and every square inch of it needs to look like this that's why you are hiring an artist yeah you, know, you give them this is kind of what I'm into and what I'm thinking and they go do their thing and, and it yeah. comes back to you. So I like that. That's, that's how, you know, it's not just another, yeah. you know, manufactured mass produced thing that you could have bought at target yeah. or whatever, you know, yeah. but you guys that, can do the mass produced stuff yeah. if needed. That's, right. That's yeah. what I was going to say is if you yeah. know, we, we also have some jobs that would, that we've done and are currently working on that are, that are just that, you know, a company comes to us and said, I need this little, you know, piece machined out of a you know sheet of carbon fiber or whatever. And I want, you know, X number of them. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's really no create the creativity on our part. There is how exactly do we do that so that it's the best and most efficient, Mm -hmm. Um, but it, but that's not something that is coming out in the end. What's coming out in the end is the customer receives the exact part they wanted. Yeah. You know, and and, the difference between the art side and the, and the, yeah. And even those mass produced things, it's not quite what I meant. You you guys know what I mean? When you get a piece of furniture in a box, (laughs) that kind of stuff. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Ikea yeah. stuff. Yeah. Sure. So let's talk about the shop a little more. So I just, okay. you know, to all the listeners, Rob has been hands on with all the shop equipment for pretty much your whole life. Correct. Yeah, I'd say that's accurate. Yeah. And then, um, path, you pretty much, or, um, patch just said your last name. <laughs> if you just go by that, you know, um, patch, you've, you know, pretty much been hands on okay. with like the carpentry type stuff. Um, kind of, since you were young too. So they are very experienced when it comes to these tools, but I want to talk about, you talked a little bit about, is it the CPS machine? Am I saying it right? It's, it's CNC and that's CNC. That's right. Yeah. It's computer numeric control. Cause that thing is so cool. I've watched videos that you've had on your Facebook page of it and I could just sit there and like watch it. It's one of those things is like, it's mesmerizing how amazing this thing is. 
And, um, and then of course you have, you know, steel working stuff and probably something for, you know, all the elements that you work with, but right. what are some cool tools that you look forward to adding to the shop in the future? Is there anything up and coming that you kind of have your eye on? We need a really nice, uh, big so much vertical band, <laughs> vert vert vertical band saw. Um, so that would be really nice. Um, the thing that I've got, the thing that makes me really excited is the prospect of, of, of getting a, um, a, I say a real CNC machine, you know, that, that CNC we have now is a, mm -hmm. it's a router table. So it's a big table, but in the third dimension, it only has like four inches and it's mainly for working on wood, plastics, soft metals, maybe like aluminum and stuff like that. But it's, um, a, a, when I say a real CNC, I mean like the ones that they use to machine like car engine parts and stuff like that, like a big oh, you wow. know, high end machine. Eventually I want to have at least one, if not multiple of those, because the way that I see this elemental form growing is that there's going to be a more sort of standard industry servicing, you know, production mm. part side of it. And then a, you know, I think, again, I think we mentioned before, kind of like the skunk works, like specialty side, which yeah. is, you know, kind of the part we're focusing on now, but, yeah. um, you know, so for me, you know, more, advanced uh, computer controlled machines. And, and then you, you, we don't even want to get started on additive manufacturing, like 3D printing and stuff. I also have some dreams about some of those machines, but um, some of the higher end ones that can make metal parts and stuff are a little out of reach financially at the moment. So very cool. Well, just for now, but yeah, yeah um, the, uh, oh, something you said just, just reminded me of something. The um, talking about cutting car parts and stuff. I mean, is that, is your business, objective in the long term to go beyond just creating art or were you just using that as a reference for the bigger machine that could make different kinds of art it, it could do both but mm. for me if there were you know i, I kind of talked about it before but I, I can i can go over it again that the i've talked about it a bunch of times not just with you guys the the end thing that i want is this maker business that that has maybe a membership side where people can come and be, and be part of this, um, yes. you know, sort of like maker co-op. And then, and then we also have the elemental form side, which is, you know, what we're mainly focusing on now. That's all the specialty stuff. And then we also have a side that is just a standard high precision machine shop that will manufacture anything that anyone comes to us with from aerospace mm. to auto, whatever, anything that anybody would go to any machine shop to have made now. Yeah. I'd like to have that capability. Um, you guys know, or at least I know Angie knows I, I made, I built a car, you know, mm -hmm. I, that we need to probably, put a picture of that on there. <laughs> I'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. probably not the last one of those. And yeah. um, the next one is not going to be a simple old school hot rod. It's going to be a little more advanced. And cool. uh, so, you know, so all of those things are Mars. leading us towards. Yeah. It's going to go to Mars. <laughs> well, that's but, uh, cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that that's kind of the, you know, what I'm excited about. And I, I really like the computerized tool, the new technology, 3D sure. printing, laser cutting, uh, that kind of stuff. You know, It's just we're really amazing what people come up with to, put together. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, my mind doesn't work like that. So I can't, I'm not an engineer, but I appreciate but... you guys that, yeah, you know, too. have that kind of thinking and that creativity. I mean, I'm sure I'm creative in my own ways, but building something like that. No, I just couldn't, I, couldn't even come up I, with I, it. I, same as Angie. I mimic <laughs> that. I live in that world. You know, the, the IT group that I work with and for, we support a massive engineering company, but you know, we've got 3d printers and, uh, all that kind of stuff, but I don't, I don't use it. I mean, I know it enough to be dangerous, but you guys that actually are doing that stuff. And you made a reference earlier about like CAD renderings. And for those of you listening, that's computer aided drafting where they will draw a 2d or 3d model and then give it to the client. So you can look at this thing from all angles before, you know, traditionally mm -hmm. you would have to make like a dummy of it out of some kind of material to give to them to look at. Now you can just look at it in 3D computer space and say, change this or change that and then give it back to you before you actually so make it. So funny story about that. So we did like a renovation on our home and um, Dan actually put it in that 
CAD. And oh, cool. then I had the virtual so I could walk around and go, yeah. oh my God, this is exactly what I want. And we yeah, literally cool. almost to the T turned it into exactly yeah. what it those, was, I mean, was, some things a, we couldn't, but. It's a blessing and a curse because talking about renovating the kitchen, she was like, I don't know. And then I did it all in the 3D <laughs> render and gave her the goggles and she <laughs> looked around and was like, yes. So it took me, you and know, an if I hour could go to go back in time. I would <laughs> never do it again. <laughs> an hour to make the rendering, three years to do the renovation. So. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. But one more thing on that, you said the Skunk Works too. Any of those really think shops, as I think of like the big tech companies, which is my world, but any of those big companies like Google and Microsoft and Apple, they're doing the products and they're making high end products, but they also have a segment of their company that they just, you know, the brain trust, they just put in a room or in a space mm -hmm. to come up with the new things. That's what it sounds like to me when you say skunk works, like that's where the innovative stuff is going to come from out of your team. And it's uh, that to me is the most exciting personally. Yeah. You, you want to me, you need to make a little space where you can do stuff that's not just driven to the profit that that's going to generate in 30 seconds. Exactly. You know? so that's that's what I just that's all I mean by that. I mean, you know, yeah, I yeah. Make any, you uh, know what I love, though, that anybody listening local that has something that they need made and don't want to, you know, go to a they want to give business to a local company, they can come to Elemental Form for something like that. So because yep. we love to support small and yeah. um, and. Speaking of that, I mean, because you you do have a big a bigger vision for your company, but do you plan on keeping it that small, you know, small business feel? Do you want to grow it? Like I know you want to do the membership thing, which I think is amazing. Um, but where do you see yourself going with Elemental Form, guys? Hey, Patrick, you can answer that. I, I don't I don't want to add a lot of employees. So that's really the, the, the I understand. baseline that, that for me, <laughs> as big as we can grow it without having to add tons of people, you know, mm. I, I'd like to keep it efficient and, and less people and more, uh, you know, uh, freedom and leeway and, and that kind of things to, to, to do stuff, uh, the yeah. right people as well. Keep keep the artistic mode and not get yeah. into the big political giant uh, yeah. corporation. And, and Patch, what about you? Do you want to quit your day job and do this full time? He's never going to say that on the air. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't, I don't, Give me the dream. <laughs> the employer is writing this down right now. I don't know that I would uh, quit my... You're right, yeah. I'm just going to come in on Monday and just be fired. <laughs> No, I don't know that I'd ever quit my day job. Um, I love my day job, but uh, if my boss is out there watching, I really, really love my day job. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing like where it would go, how far we could take it. Maybe, you know, it's it's one of those things where I kind of, I, I, so I work for a company uh, full time. I own another company. Uh, um, this project with Rob is uh, the third or fourth uh, venture that I've gotten into over mm. the past couple of years. And um, kind of the way that I see it is, is it's always going to be um, an outlet for me to, you know, express some of my artistic side and everything like that. Mm. And when it comes to uh, companies like this, I'm not, I'm not like a money grubbing person or anything like that. Yeah. I don't, you know, want to be a billionaire or anything, but uh, I do see it as an opportunity to, uh, start something that's really cool, hire the right people, put them in place to make sure that it runs and functions. And then I can always, you know, have it as an outlet mm. for um, the artistic side. And also as, you know, um, a passive income um, yeah. or an, an active income, you know, depending on where it takes it, you know, I don't, I don't know if Elon Musk, decided he wanted to come in and invest a couple billion dollars into my company, then maybe it would become a full-time thing. Yeah, you might really, not say yeah. no. Yeah. I'd have to quit my day job, but, uh, <laughs> but, oh, you know, I, just one I of love that attitude. Though. I, do too. Uh, yeah. I keep, yeah. I keep, you know, keep, keep it fluid and, you know, um, just try not to put too much, uh, expectation on it as far as, yep. uh, mm. you know, is it going to be successful? How bad do I need it to be successful or, uh, you know, that sort of thing. So it's just, you know, day by day living from me, I guess. 
I love that though. Yeah. I, I mean, that gives the that keeps the opportunity door wide open while you're living yeah. your life the way you want to. And it and it also shows that you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. You know, you're doing it because you do want to create something, and I I love that. Now, you guys are opening. I did see that um, you're going to be opening your online store soon. Yep. Um, but any plans to maybe open like a little boutique type shop, you know, in like downtown, you know, little, so, little downtown Mount Dora or something? Yeah, I, I have. A, um, there are a couple of places around. Uh, one I can think of as an Apopka called, I think, Trader Mays. Oh, yeah. oh we love that, that place. That, yeah. yeah so, so to me, I'm still kind of strategizing on what I think makes the most sense because you know, like, 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 let's say you want to do a little store downtown in Mount Dora. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys have ever looked at what it costs to rent a little store downtown in Mount Dora. Oh, I can oh, imagine. Probably ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the amount of money that it costs to rent that, if I was making that money, I could just live very handsomely for the rest of my life on that. Yeah. I, yeah. I have a, so <laughs> to yeah, me, true. it makes the most sense to have something like, you know, I don't necessarily like think the flea market is the right place but i like yeah. that trader maze there's some other places yeah. more towards town that kind of have that like i don't know if the right hipstery kind of yeah exactly you know, yeah. sort of vibe or whatever so i think something like that could be pretty mm -hmm. cool i also have some plans or obviously we're gonna we're working on our website which is going to be a you know full, full on um you know full service deal um and then um additionally some some other online outlets you know i was thinking about mm -hmm. doing an etsy store etsy with some store. specialty stuff or like you know wedding Chachi, yeah. uh, kitchen stuff, cutting boards, things like that, you know, and just, yeah. you know, so it's almost like building back to the earlier question. I, I can almost see Elemental Form being like a parent organization. And then, and then there's, you know, our kitchenware line and our, you know, our man cave wall mm. art signs and our, you know, and, and all the different things that we do. And then, and then in each one of those, I think whatever medium you present them in is, is the one that makes the most sense for the, that one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Whatever it is. So that's kind of, you know. Yeah, I, I, lo I love that. I love shopping on Etsy. I do be careful on there. Make sure it is like um, a small business or individual sure. that's creating it because big businesses do put their stuff mm -hmm. on there. So I do research and make sure I am getting this from a legit small person yeah. or individual. That's the kind of pieces I want to purchase. So yep. I think you'd have much success on there especially, you know, around too. holiday. I mean, I'm always looking on there. Just a quick question. Cause I don't know if we talked about glass. Do you guys like engrave on glass as well? We haven't. Um, Cause we've talked about metal and wood and plastic, but glass was the one thing that we did not chat about. So yeah. I was just want curious. Yeah, we, we haven't. Um, I, actually have um some some close friends that have some like you know not really businesses but but are makers um that mm -hmm. have some la laser machines that can do uh various types of uh, etching mm. and stuff like that but okay. i haven't done any any glass etching um we could also do some of that i could think right now of, of a way to do it with some of the bead blasting equipment and stuff that we have so um oh, cool. you know if, you could do a mask over the glass and then you know get some kind of frosted you know look or something like that so hmm. um so I just really haven't had anybody even ask that, honestly. But if someone came to me and said, hey, I want this on a piece of glass, <laughs> we would either figure yeah. out how to do it or we would you know, contract it out and make yeah. it part of the Get it done. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I don't very know. Nice. That just, you know, things pop in my brain sometimes. No, it's great. <laughs> <It's just like laughs> well, gentlemen, it's been really cool talking to you again. It's been nice to hear about your uh, business and, you know, the direction you guys are going and what you're doing. Um, you mentioned that you have a website that's in the works. How can people find you right now? Uh, right now on social media, uh, just on Instagram or Facebook, just look mm -hmm. for uh, Elemental Form. Um, I think the Instagram's Elemental Form LLC. Uh, and then on Facebook, if you just uh, just search for Elemental Form. And um, I, Angie, I think I sent you links for that stuff before. Yep. So we got all the links, them. so we will make sure to include those in the show notes. And I'll also yep. have them on the screen, like anybody watching yeah, YouTube channel. So they but will yeah, be Facebook able to contact Messenger. you. Yeah. Facebook Messenger, Instagram, you know, instant uh, DMs or whatever, all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. uh, email, you know, ele elemental form LLC at, at gmail.com. So, uh, yeah, we we, uh, we monitor all that stuff and respond quickly. Awesome. And for those of you, I say this every episode, but for those of you uh, listening on your podcast player, you can just scroll down to get the links to everything that Rob just mentioned. Yeah. Super cool, guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much once again. And we look forward to all, you know, just kind of watching your growth and see your success and maybe ordering ourselves a... Fine uh, and Dangy sign. I was going to ask you about that after the show. Sign. That's what we were thinking because <laughs> yeah, yeah. we... 
Now, do you do logos like that detailed, like the cartoony things, or should, would it need to be more of a um, more simplified? Wording? Because it's yeah, that's what I was we, thinking. We could talk about it. I mean, obviously, if you're cutting something into a slab and lighting it, you know, backlighting it, it's mm -hmm. probably not going to look, you know, it's going to be difficult to make it look like an image. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that said, um, you know, the, the sky's the limit on, on different creative options. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's just something we could work together on. Uh, yeah, very nice. Talk, talk about what we do and, you know, P Patch yeah. would really be, uh, also super instrumental on that. And very, very I think creative mind, so. we'll have to talk about, it. I think the words might look really cool in that. Just the, yeah. the, just Word. the just the name of, yeah. of the show, yeah. And you can make catch a silhouette or something, you know, or just a little edge or something that you know yeah. ties back to your logo or something. So who knows, you know? Very. So sky's the limit is what I'm hearing. Yeah. I, yep, <laughs> well, I'm sure the audience wants it. That's oh, what that's, they want to hear. I know. Right. Just, I'm gonna, right there. I just when he said maybe a silhouette that it creates that looks more like the image or whatever. I'm like, wait, you can do that? So yeah, we yeah. definitely have to <laughs> we have to talk because that yeah. sounds cool. Yep. All right, guys. Well, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And thank you so much once, once again. Once again. Yes. Got it out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys very much. This Thanks. is very cool. And we appreciate you joining us again. And we're excited to see what happens. Yeah. Thanks for having us. All right. Yeah, have a great rest of the day. Right, yes. Thank bye, you, guys. guys. Take care. Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for joining us for that interview with Elemental Form. What a cool concept and a cool company. I know, that is really neat. I love to see the success of people that I went to school with. And, sure. And especially Rob, he's always been so creative and smart as yeah. can be. You so can tell. To uh, combine those two things together. Yeah, you could totally tell. Yeah, and they're going to be very successful. You know, I don't know them personally, but I just love to see people that decide, I want to do this with my time. I want to do this as a creative outlet. And yes, it's going to, you know, eventually be my livelihood or contribute to my livelihood and supporting my family and myself. But this is what I'm going to do. It's not, I to wish make me happy too, is what yeah, they yeah, say. Yeah, They're doing it's, this because it's, you know, something that will make them happy. Yeah, exactly. And it's field. not, mm -hmm. it's not, I hope I can do this. I'm going to try to do this. He's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do I, it. And you, yeah. he's not going to be happy just sitting there in a cube doing his thing all day, every yeah. day. So, yeah, I do. I love that. But guys, we thank you so much for each and every time you tune in, especially to listen to or support our small local businesses, artists, creatives, authors, et cetera, et cetera, restaurants. So we love that you help support the small community here. Yes, we do. And, you know, guys, give us a call if you are interested in being on the show, if you know somebody that would be a, a good fit. And you can call us at 407-490-3899, or you can always email us at feedback at fineanddangy.com. That's right. You can also find us on all of our social media, which is mostly Facebook and Instagram. Um, I think we just tweet the link to each episode. Yeah. Uh, but you can find us at Fine and Dangy on all of that. And 101 episodes into this, and I still don't have our phone number memorized. No, so. me neither. <laughs> to look up that because really do we ever call anybody i mm. wish we could get text to that number can we we cannot no. but no it's just Darn saying it a hundred times now I and i still haven't memorized <laughs> it so anyway again that's 407-490-3899 i know some of you have reached out and expressed you don't want to call that you don't want to be on the air that's not what it is no you don't even really have to talk to us it is a voicemail that automatically yeah. says hey leave a message let us know what you're thinking and uh, it, it, unless you tell us this can be on the air, I want this on the air. We're just gathering yeah. information from you. It's how we've gotten some of our guests. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can do that and stay safe that we're not going to <laughs> because people mostly email. And I think yeah. it, maybe it's a generational thing. Nobody likes to call anymore. Yeah. yeah uh, right. but, but we also want to ask you that if you enjoy the show, please give us a rating. Mm -hmm. We've seen more ratings come in. We really, really appreciate it. That makes such the difference on people being able to find our show and on the various uh, podcast platforms pushing us up in the list. If you love the show, we encourage you to subscribe to the show. That, of course, will give yeah. you notifications on your podcast player every time we add a new episode. Yep. And then lastly, like we ask 
every episode or we tried to, we want you to stop for a minute and consider Mm -hmm. how you can help the people in your community, whether or not that means helping your local businesses by supporting them, especially now at the time of COVID, but anytime Mm -hmm. local artists, uh, people that are on the side of the street that, you know, are struggling and need money or your local shelters or your local charitable organizations that speak closely to you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I just wanted to give a shout out because last week was our hundredth episode. It was. So another shout out to everybody that called in and, you know, people that wished us congratulations and just to all of our past guests, we appreciate each and every one of you. And we're so happy about what our podcast future looks like. Yeah, we are. And again, yeah, Yeah. it's a very good point, but thank you guys. We, we couldn't do this without you and, yeah, I, we've just, you know, I, this is going to sound cheesy, but it really warms our mm. heart to see so much of the community kind of helping to support us to keep this thing going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we really it. appreciate it. I love it. But guys, remember, at the end of each and every single day, it's, it's all fine and